Hello friends and welcome to my first digital art draw with me video. Today I will be drawing on my iPad Pro 11 inch and I will be using this wonderful little application called Procreate. Here is a sketch of what I'll be drawing today and let me tell you a little bit about the inspiration behind this piece. As many of you know, I'm originally from Thailand, but I am now based in the US. And since I moved here, I have been using art as a way to reconnect with my culture by exploring things like food, travel, and way of life. And this drawing is actually inspired by this picture right here. This is a sweet sticky rice dish wrapped in banana leaf, and it's dyed blue with butterfly pea flower, which is so fragrant and beautiful and vibrant. And I just wanted to have this light blue colored cat sitting inside of a banana leaf so this is what i ended up with i usually start off with line art and base shadows i've been loving this dark blue indigo color for my line art and here i'm just using the monoline brush on procreate to trace the outline of my sketch While we're here, I also wanted to answer some Q&A questions that friends have left for me on Instagram. We're adding a little bit of a podcast moment to this draw with me video. So let's start with the very first question. How did you start drawing? I've always loved drawing. Art was one of my favorite subjects in school and I took a lot of art classes. I remember in high school, you were required to take at least one art class for three credits in order to graduate. And I must have taken like eight or nine classes because it was one of my favorite subjects i had a phase where i was super into drawing real life comics so i would illustrate my school friends what we did and the conversations we had at lunchtime and stuff like that i think it was a way for me to preserve the memories that we shared and that's why art has always been so important to me i especially love trying to get my friends hairstyles and facial expressions right i guess i never paid much attention to body language which is why i'm terrible at drawing full body people nowadays but yeah that's that's how I started back in elementary school and I've been drawing ever since. So once I'm done with the line art, I like to go in with the details and add some shadows with the same indigo color that I've been using. Here I'm adding shadows to the parts where I expect to be the darkest, like underneath the cat or in the folds of the banana leaves. The banana leaves that we use for cooking are usually foraged and stored for quite some time, so they tend to have these dark spots on them which I wanted to add into my drawing as well. The next question is how do you pick your colors and I think it depends on what I'm drawing. Usually I'm very attracted to pink and green tones so I love drawing things like plants and flowers and of course cats. Lately I've been practicing drawing from what I see and not from what I know so when I think about the image of a leaf I usually imagine some type of green color right? But when I look up a reference image I've noticed that some leaves have a yellowing on the edges or like a red undertone to their stem. I try to look at the images and find these colors that I wouldn't expect to be there and I accentuate them in my illustrations by adding vibrancy and saturation. So here I'm going to lay down the base colors by using the same brush. I'm tracing the inside of my line art where I will use the drop color tool next. I remember telling you guys once that I prefer to color everything in by hand because I like how the textures looked but after doing that for every single illustration, I realized that it was making my wrist hurt really bad. So now I'm learning to use the color drop tool and I chose this bluish purple color because that's the butterfly pea flower color that I mentioned to you earlier. I'm also planning to do a gradient effect on the cat for no particular reason. I just wanted it to have like a lighter top. I'm going to do this by creating a new layer on top of the first one, turning on clipping mask, and this is a procreate tool that I use in all my illustrations because it allows me to add another color or another texture on top without going outside of the edges of the base color. And to blend the colors, I usually use the gradient tool, but in this case, I ended up using the noise brush to smudge everything together in instead. A 
lot of people asked me about my favorite Procreate brushes. So for line art, my all-time favorite brushes are 6B Pencil, Dry Ink, Monoline, and Tinderbox. For coloring, I like Flat Brush and Nickel Roll, which are both paint brushes. Nickel Roll is a new favorite, and I think the porous texture of the brush is super cool. Other brushes that I use for texture are the Noise Brush, Artist Crayon, and Oil Pastel. These are all brushes that come with Procreate, but I also have favorites that I purchase from other artists. My favorite packs are the VV Brush Pack, especially the watercolor brushes, and Beat Tones, which is where I get my halftone texture from. Thank you to everyone who asked how Mosa is doing. I'm so happy to know that you guys love her just as much as I do. She's doing great, by the way, especially now that we've moved. I think she likes the new apartment a lot more because it's more quiet and peaceful. And nowadays, she just gets to sunbathe and eat and she seems very, very happy. You guys also asked me how I'm doing and whether I had any self-care tips to share. I'm doing okay. Thank you so much for checking in. As for self-care, care tips, I think I'm at the point in my mental health journey where I'm starting to redefine what self-care means to me. I used to think that self-care only meant taking breaks, resting, journaling, watching my favorite movie, and all of the feel-good things. And that's not wrong, but I'm also realizing that self-care can look very different from the feel-good things. Self-care can also include feeling your feelings, standing up for yourself, setting boundaries, and deciding that certain friendships or relationships aren't worth pursuing anymore. And if you ask me, those are all very unpleasant experiences, but I consider it self-care anyways because uncomfortable healing is such a crucial part of moving forward and mental health growth. And I guess my self-care tip that I wanted to share with you today is that the journey won't always feel good, but you just have to keep swimming and keep pushing through because it's going to be worth it in the end. So as you can see, I finished laying down the base color for the banana leaf. I'm going with this darker green color because I wanted the blue cat to stand out. I also mentioned earlier that some leaves have a yellowing at the edges, so I wanted to add some bright yellow or lime green colors to the edges of the banana leaf as well. For this part, I'm using nickel rule because I like the texture and I'm going to use noise brush to smudge everything out. The next question is, is it okay to start a business with 1k followers on Instagram? When I started planning for my sticker shop, I think I only had around 600 to 700 followers on Instagram. I don't think the number of followers is as important as knowing your audience and getting feedback for your work. I started my shop with only 3 to 4 sticker designs and I made only 30 stickers for each design because I wanted to take things slow and gauge people's reactions first. I also feel like the stickers I expect to sell never sell and the ones I don't expect to sell actually sell out first so it's really interesting to see which designs people like more. So rather than set a certain amount of followers as your goal for starting a business, I think it's more important to interact with the people who already follow you and get to know what they like most from you. really have a reference picture for this part so I'm just going with my imagination but here you can see me adding smaller dots all around the leaf for more texture and I'm also going to add some complementary reds just to give the drawing a little bit more warmth. I feel like with blue and green it's a lot of cool tones and I just wanted to balance it out. What 
what motivates you to keep up your small business even when things get rough? Uh, this is a tough one because I'm honestly not the best at motivating myself, especially on hard days. But the one thing that keeps me going is the thought that I still have so much more to learn. I feel like every rough moment and every mistake I've made is a lesson that will help me grow as a small business owner. And it's really tough running your own small business, as I'm sure you guys can understand. But I'm just getting started started and I remind myself every time that I can't quit before I find out what my full potential and abilities are. So aside from wanting to share my art and creativity with you guys, it's this one thought that keeps me going. Here I'm adding this rice pattern on top of the cat's head to make her look a little bit more like sticky rice. I honestly don't think it turned out the way I wanted but I kept it anyways because I kinda like it. I like this next question a lot and I think you guys can guess the answer too. If you could draw one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? Probably cats because I love drawing cats and they just come in so many different shapes and colors and poses. Like the one I'm drawing in this video for example, this was inspired by a pose that Mosa was doing while she was grooming herself. I think cat friends are the best friends and drawing them just always puts me in a good mood. So yeah, cats. So the next thing I'm doing is working on the shadows and the doodles in the background. When I finished sketching this piece, I noticed that it kind of gives off the Birth of Venus vibes. Here, I'll insert a picture for you to see. The banana leaf is kind of shaped like the shell and the cat is even covering her lady parts. So I think that's super funny and I really like the flowers in the Birth of Venus. So I decided to doodle some flowers in the background of my drawing too. I think we're transitioning to more personal questions now. So the first one is, what is your current favorite song? I'm currently obsessed with Love Song by Anja Kotar. Anja is such an amazing artist and we've had the chance to talk in DMs because I like to use her songs in my vlogs. She's super sweet and kind and this new song gives me daydreaming and La La Land vibes, which I love so much. What is your favorite Thai food? I have a lot of favorites because a lot of Thai food is comfort food for me. But if I had to pick one, it would be Khao Man Kai, which is braised chicken on rice. This is usually served with winter melon soup and is such a hearty meal, it always reminds me of home. My favorite type of cake is red velvet cake and my default boba order is large milk tea with boba, 30% sugar and less ice. Sometimes I also do Thai milk tea and anything sesame flavored is a favorite. What do you like most about packing orders? My favorite favorite thing about packing orders is reading the little notes that you guys write for me. Sometimes I feel a little bit like a robot when I pack and things can get a bit tedious, but I get excited every single time I see a note from you. I feel like it always warms my heart and puts a smile on my face. As you can see here, I spend a lot of time adjusting colors and hues because I never feel like my work is good enough yet. I also forgot to do a lot of details in this one because drawing on camera really made me anxious. But anyways, the last thing I like to do is to add the noise effect on everything. I usually do 5-7% to for the colors and around 15% for the line art. I just really like the fuzzy texture that it gives. And we're all done! Thank you so much for stopping by to watch me draw today. I had a lot of fun filming and editing this and I'll try to do more draw with me's in the future for sure. Thank you to everyone who left me kind and encouraging messages in the Q&A. I will see you all next Wednesday. Lots of love. Bye!